Hello and welcome to another video here at Milky Chess channel. It's been a while since we made the last video and I'll be starting a series now uh, uh, helping people to improve their chess. So differently from my channel in Brazil, which I show the games in a more entertaining style, I decided to create this playlist on this channel um, in teaching. So teaching, I'm, I'm a national master, I'm not a professional grandmaster. I am rated at around uh, 2200 on chess.com and uh, maybe 2400 on Lee Chess. So I, you know, I, I'm not a professional, but I can teach. I can, <laughs> I can teach most of people. Uh, so that's the idea of this uh, playlist is to, to bring this knowledge that I have during uh, several years studying chess and uh, so try to bring people to my level and then you will need a master, a grandmaster, international master to go beyond that, okay? So that's the idea of the series, I hope you enjoyed it and this video is being sponsored by Insider, Insider Store, uh, which is a store, um, which is a store for the tech, tech t-shirts. So uh, th th those are amazing t-shirts because they have technology, so you, they are anti-odor technology, anti-bacteria, so you can use it. It is anti-sweating, so this is you can feel very comfortable a full day using it, and you will not be sweating, you will not be, you know, smelly, and uh, mainly in the summer, and you can also use the black t-shirt, even in the summer, you can go to the sun, and you will not be wet because of this technology, okay? So uh, this t-shirt has a technology that it frees your sweat so you you don't you don't get wet uh so you can use black you can use your preferred colors so and uh for the subscribers to here to the channel and viewers of the channel uh there is a coupon of 15 percent discount which is in the description of the video below and uh by using the coupon in the link below you can purchase uh your tech t-shirts from insider store with a 15 percent discount okay so that's really good in the summer, that's really good to travel, so this is the basic with technology and uh, I encourage you to read more about the Insider here on the website and those technology technologic t-shirts, okay? Alright, so let's go to the video and here I'm going to show you uh, a game that I play today at chess.com uh, and I find it really instructive game, so that's why I'm deciding to show you, it's a very short game, 18 moves and uh but this is really instructive so how to crush a 2100 player at chess.com in 18 moves right so let's take a look at that uh he started with d4 so the queen uh, opening queen spawn opening and uh you can reply this several ways i can play knight f6 i can play e6 which is very flexible i can go straight to the center with d5 uh, but you know, usually those guys, 2100 plus rating, they know all that stuff and they know theory a lot. So I, I try to, 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 you know, bring it to a Benoni or something different. I play the immediate uh, C5 here, the old Benoni. And here he can also, he can of course capture here. But then I get a good center, I can develop my pieces. Now he's uh, moving his pawn again and you know, uh, he's freeing, uh, occupying the center and, and uh, fighting for the center. And then it's a good idea to, to decoy this pawn. But uh, he didn't capture, he went for d5, advancing the pawn, which is a great move. You know, trying to postpone my development. I, or I immediately attack the center with e6. And then he, uh, there, there are many moves he can play here, but he went for this best idea here, uh, which is uh, playing the c4 move, okay? e4 is also possible as well, but um, no, the best idea here is to play c4. Actually, he didn't play c4 in this game. Uh, then we can transpose here to, to the Benoni like that. Um, we could transpose to the Benoni like that. But uh, in, the, in the game, he actually took the pawn, and here I decided to took the pawn with the D pawn. Of course, it's possible to capture with F pawn, but I don't mind, I don't mind uh, exchanging queens and not being able to castle, because, you know, I already have a presence with, in the center with my pawns, and he doesn't, so uh, he, ex extrated, he exchanged the queens, and then he continued with C4, and here there are many ways to continue. I find it very good to play Bishop D6 here, because he can play Knight C6 in, in the future, he will try to, 
to go uh, in the c7 square, attack me from here. And most probably he's going to play bishop f4 and try to, you know, castle, uh, giving me a check. So that's why uh, experience shows that bishop d6 here is a good move. And that's why I played it. Uh, he continued to knight c3, I play knight f6, and then e4 is coming. And then knight to c6. I develop my knight. I must take care, I need to take care of ideas in the future like... You know, f4, e5, the setup here, uh, and the knight f6 and bishop d6, you know, it's kind of vulnerable to uh, some forks. So I need to take control of that. Developing a, a piece is good because I also free this square b8 to my bishop in case he attacks my bishop. So he continued with uh, bishop e3, developing a piece. I decided to extra, to super protect the pawn here on c5 and also give room uh, to, for my bishop to play. Uh, he continued with uh, f3. This move is... Um, I, I don't like this move a lot. I know it, it has an idea of defending the pawn on e4 and freeing the knight to other duties. But I don't like this move a lot. And it's not developing a piece. And it's, I think it's very slow, uh, slow move. And then I played here king to e7. This is a good move, I think, because now I'm preparing to bring my rook and put my king out of uh, this open column. So king e7 was played and then here he castled, long castle. Uh, and then he's able to bring the rook to the game and then I play the rook to the eight and then I feel fine here I developed a lot of pieces and then he comes with another slow move. He played the move a3 Which I don't like at all um, Because again, he's not developing his pieces. There is an undefended bishop here undefended pieces are always many times they are subject to tactical uh, strikes and then it's not good to, to leave your uh, pieces undefended. It may, it may seem that it's not important right now, you know, there, nobody is attacking this bishop, but you will see in the future the problem of that. So I continue developing my pieces here with bishop to d7, and then he played another move, f4. And then here I felt that the game was over, because I, I must have something good here, because my king is well placed, I have my four pieces are developed, one rook is already developed, and he he didn't develop his pieces. So that's why I made, I'm making this video to show the importance of developing your pieces and having your pieces protected. And here, and here I came with a move that uh, it's, it's black to play and win. If you want to pause the video and try to find this move, uh, it's a very, very interesting position. One move is, is, there are many good moves here, but one move just finishes the game. And I hope that you have found uh, this move knight to g4. And now that's the problem. Now that's the problem for white. Because the bishop is attacked and uh, there is another problem. It's lined up in this diagonal in the king. So the king is kind of exposed already. Uh, I mean, there's no way you can protect here. Because I, I, have, I have several threats here. The bishop cannot retreat due to the knight f4 um, fork uh, double attack. Attacking both rooks. So he could think about playing this move, rook to e1, you know, now it's, there's no fork anymore. But the problem is the, the, this alignment in this uh, black square diagonal. So that's, that's, that's a huge problem now for white. I mean, white's lost already. There's nothing he can do. Uh, he played the best move here, which is e5, you know, trying to counter. Um, and here he's attacking my bishop, and in case I capture his bishop, with, which I did not, I did not uh, do in the game, but it, it is also a good move. He captures with check, right? So then I could play here something like king f8 or even capture the pawn, no problem at all. But uh, I found uh, I found that it was more interesting to play uh, more, another move, so I played bishop to e5. And the idea is I'm capturing a pawn, you know, I'm capturing a pawn and I'm also threatening bishop. Uh, so I feel good here. So that's why I played bishop to e5. And then, you know, he's going to lo lose his bishop. Then he played this move uh, bishop to c5. At least he's capturing one pawn. And it seems he's going to save it all because uh, he's going to exchange rooks. There will be no, no, no double attack anymore. So the game continued with uh, pawn takes and then he took and then I took. And of course, here I considered uh, capturing here, but then he could, you know, uh, go back with, uh, with the rook. So 
I just decided that I could recapture here and then uh, play knight f2 next move, which is exactly what I did. So after he took the, the bishop, everything seems to be normal. The material is even, six pawn each, each side, um, three minor pieces for each side and one rook for each one. But then the final move, knight f2, just finishes the game. He still played knight h3, uh, took the full rook here. And then he tried something with uh, knight to b5, but after knight takes e5, you know, completely disprotecting the a7 pawn, but not allowing him to come to the knight to d6. Also, I have a possibility to play knight to g4, attacking h2, and also giving support to the f2 square. So there are many, many good moves here for me, uh, for black pieces, and that's why in this position, uh, my opponent resigned the game here. So 18 moves, and this is to show again uh, the importance of developing your pieces. Uh, although I lost the possibility to castle here, I was very quick developing. You can uh, notice that almost every move I made was developing a piece. You know, king brings the king helps to bring the rook. Then I develop the rook. Then I develop the bishop, and here he is moving his pawns, right? So if you take a quick look here, it seems that white is, you know, coming forward and and in, and he's um, in dominance in this game. And actually not, there are many weaknesses and that's, we exploited it uh, with an IG4 move. So that's it. Uh, I hope you have enjoyed this game. Well, here is the report. So uh, very precise game, not, not as usual. Uh, I usually go around 86, 87 uh, accuracy. This is my standard um, number for, for the Blitz games. And here it is, the bishop takes e5, the computer considered uh, a bright move, but it's, 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 I, I don't feel like it's super bright. I prefer the knight g4 move for human, human uh, standpoint, but okay, I, I appreciate uh, the, the compliment here from the machine. But that's it, people. I hope you have enjoyed this, this game and this video. I hope this has helped you somehow uh, to understand the importance of developing your pieces. And that's it. Thank you so much for your audience. See you next video. Bye.